Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Singh, for your introduction, and thank you very much for organizing this meeting. And uh, uh, and and then I'm, uh, also uh, it was a great pleasure to uh, share with our results uh, with our colleagues all over the world. And it's interesting. This format is actually uh, looks like a, uh, is working quite well. And today, so I will talk about some of the work uh, we did. Uh, I'm talking on behalf of uh, the China Consortium on Chest CT Imaging Investigation. So it's a CCCC2 um, um, project. And we have another one on X-ray and uh, which it has another acronym uh, for this. Um, so uh, I don't have to actually tell you how important it is to diagnose uh, uh, COVID-19 and, uh, and computed uh, tomography uh, has been an important tool in non-disease uh, uh, diagnosis, including pneumonia. And obviously this is actually taken on a more important meaning in uh, COVID-19 because of the uh, shortage, still shortage of uh, nucleic acid based testing methods. And uh, in addition, uh, CT can give you this quantitative measurement of lung lesions. So with all that uh, uh, caveats and uh, uh, this in China, at the initial outbreaks and uh, um, and uh, the radiologists and the hospitals has been or have been had been focusing on using CT for diagnosis of uh, COVID nineteen pneumonia. Um, so uh, so there are, uh, just like Dr. Shen said, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, issues in uh, using uh, the CT for 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 applications of the COVID nineteen uh, diagnosis and the prognosis and. Uh, what we did here uh, is to actually build up two models. And uh, one is for a diagnosis. And uh, in order to build a very, uh, very accurate diagnose, uh, diagnosis uh, um, uh, a tool, we found that it's important to uh, initially uh, do a segmentation uh, and build a segmentation network. Therefore, we, um, uh, our colleagues, uh, radiologists, uh, 40 radiologists, uh, painstakingly, uh, painted pixel by pixel um, slices, which is about uh, 5,000 slices. And for, from those slices, we'll train the classifier uh, to segment those lesions, so six types of lesions. Um, and then we also, uh, and then we actually classify, we then um, taking end-to-end -end approach uh, to have the, uh, the, class, uh, the computers learn uh, these other features of the uh, lesions. Uh, so that's one. And the second one is we take the lung lesion features, combine them with the clinical metadata, uh, try to correlate uh, number one with the clinical features, and then also uh, attempt to uh, make a prognostic analysis. Uh, so this is actually at the first results, uh, we uh, were able to uh, segment uh, uh, different features of uh, lesions. Uh, this is called the, uh, including uh, consolidation ground glass appearance, uh, fibrosis, interstitial thickening, and pro effusion, some of the important uh, features of uh, a lesion. And this is important not only just for initial diagnosis, we found that often for the uh, patients who progress into severe uh, cases, critical ill patients, and eventually they will, uh, the lungs will undergo fibrosis. And those are uh, patients are important uh, to be evaluated uh, through quantitative measurements. So, uh, fibrosis um, segmentation are important. And uh, so, so shown here are some of the features uh, of uh, uh, different, uh, different lesions. We were also able to um, uh, reconstruct into a three-dimensional lesions um, volume as well as uh, uh, space relationships. And uh, shown here is actually on the right side is a uh, video, which I will not actually play. I essentially give you a, a, a straight, basically a rundown of uh, where the lesions are. And uh, so as, as the first initial um, attempt to address the diagnosis of uh, novel coronavirus pneumonia, we, we call NCP. And uh, we uh, took um, a uh, uh, few thousands of patients and uh, over uh, 300,000 uh, slices and uh, uh, as a uh, training and also internal validation cohort. And uh, we did it against uh, uh, several other uh, pneumonia. And as you, as you can imagine, so as a screening tool, we first need to make sure that it will give actually very high 
uh, diagnostic accuracy to normal lung and also will be able to uh, differentiate with other common pneumonia. Here uh, that includes bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, and uh, other uh, uh, pneumonia such as uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. As you can see that it did actually perform quite well uh, in this regard. We also was able to um, uh, do some uh, prospective studies uh, uh, both in independent Chinese cohort as well as um, international cohorts. In the Chinese cohorts, we took into consideration that uh, uh, different uh, regions of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of China might have different rates of infections. For example, in uh, part of the uh, Wuhan, obviously, it is very high, infection rates are very high. So uh, we uh, did a prospective cohort there and then I show actually has very high accuracy. And, and, uh, and then we also went on and uh, did the additional cohorts in the non-epidemic areas, such as uh, Anhui, as well as Guangzhou, and those two areas, and which has uh, the cohort, we, what we took is actually consecutive patients who came to the uh, fever clinic. And obviously people come to, uh, with fever with different reasons, uh, one of which is uh, try to make sure they do not have, uh, uh, they don't have COVID-19 pneumonia. We use, uh, the standard uh, nuclear acid uh, based RT-PCR methods as, as standard measurements and uh, to, to make sure that we, uh, we made a, a correct diagnosis. In doing so that, uh, as you can see, we also achieved very high accuracy, overall accuracy of uh, 90%. Uh, another reason uh, of using an AI system is to see how the AI system can assist our radiologists and ER physicians for the frontline diagnosis of uh, COVID-19 pneumonia. In this case, uh, what we show here is uh, by training with about 300,000 uh, NCP uh, and other uh, pneumonia cases, uh, it can achieve quite a actually good uh, uh, diagnostic accuracy. If you look at the uh, panel C, uh, so this is actually a weighted error and it's about 9%, or as um, the radiologist, average radiologist, the senior radiologist is performing comparable to the AI platform. Um, but however, the junior radiologists are all over the place. If you look at the panel B, look at the initial uh, junior radiologist uh, performance, they are far beyond or far below the senior as well as the AI performance. Uh, in this case, we also uh, uh, allow the junior radiologists to assess the AI-based uh, uh, diagnosis. And, and, and then I also show where the AI thinking, uh, where the lesions are, and to give the uh, uh, junior radiologists opportunity to, to re-actually diagnosing uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the CHSAT uh, of the three categories. And this is, again, uh, about three weeks later, we make sure that they don't memorize or remember what they have done before. As you can see that in, this is actually can dramatically, the AI can dramatically assist and improve the diagnosis of the junior radiologists. So I think this is actually one of the uh, more compelling reasons of AI. And uh, uh, we, we clearly actually uh, see that the uh, performance of a junior radiologist can be uh, dramatically improved by the assistance of AI and uh, uh, either uh, using AI as a second grader or actually uh, or as a you know, basic assistant, assistant with the first grader uh, cases. Um, so uh, one other reason I thought actually it would be, uh, we thought it would be actually important for AI to perform is actually see uh, how well the AI can predict other um, aspects of the uh, systemic health. And the reason being that uh, uh, I think this is particularly uh, important for CT because uh, the scanning of the uh, of the lung essentially give us a quantitative measurement so how big and small and how acute the lesions are and uh, because the lung function is directly proportional to the lesion size and the properties of the COVID nineteen. And we thought it had to be a way to essentially extrapolate and project the systemic health of the, uh, of, of the entire uh, body. So this is actually, when we did this, we actually uh, was blinded 
we don't have any knowledge because at that time, some of the prognostic clinical factor uh, papers have, haven't been come out. We essentially use big data and a long lesion, ask the question for essentially the correlation. As you can see in this slide, we actually show that uh, age, um, uh, C-reactive proteins and albumin are highly correlated with, uh, with, the, with the lesion size just by itself, by looking at the lesion size. And uh, uh, the lung and the liver function turned out to be, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's very conceivable that the lung function will be impacted on the, the leaching properties and the size. And uh, so as a saturation, uh, CO2 saturation respiratory rate. However, what we didn't actually expect is actually the lung leaching properties was correlated very well with the uh, uh, other uh, part of the function. So essentially, at the time, we, we thought that the lung le leaching size uh, or actually progression to the uh, respiratory failure and uh, being put on the ventilation, uh, mechanical ventilation, uh, uh, essentially let us actually solely uh, focus on the lung function. And this is actually AI-based uh, 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 non-hypothesis-driven uh, search. Let us actually uh, start to think about some other systemic factors are going to be impacting the uh, the outcomes of the severity and outcomes of the uh, of those uh, units. So this is actually uh, what we actually found. And uh, so not only we found the correlation, we also are, um, uh, are looking at the uh, leaching size of the lung and the features plus the clinical factors. How would that actually be contributing to the progression to the critical units? Uh, by definition, those are uh, admissions to the ICU put on the mechanical ventilation, uh, ventilator or death. And you can see here that uh, uh, clearly that the lung leaching play a major role. And then just by itself, we actually already give AUC about 80, 83, 84%. And with the clinical properties, it can actually essentially raise, raise up to the 90%. And in addition, we were able to stratify in figure uh, panel E uh, upon the, at the admission of the, uh, of the patient to, to the hospital, what's the chance and how long it will take for them to progress into critical illness. Because that actually information is very important for the, uh, the physicians, respiratory uh, pulmonologists, the ER physicians uh, to strategize uh, the strategy and uh, allocating uh, proper uh, resources to make sure that uh, we can alter the disease course in the beginning of the progression such that we can reduce uh, the uh, ICU emissions, and because uh, once we get to the ICU emissions, the, the, all the data show that uh, there's a 60% mortality and then a lot of actually uh, things are already irreversible. Another function of the, uh, uh, we thought that the AI can do is to, uh, for the evaluation of the drug treatment effects. Uh, so because of the AI, the CT-based AI system can uh, do a beautiful job in quantifying the lesion size and properties. So in this case, we just took uh, three drugs and uh, because at the time, uh, uh, those drugs are still undergoing clinical trials. So we cannot actually break the, uh, the envelope for seals for, for those drugs. However, we were, we were giving the uh, before and after treatment uh, a le uh, CT scanning uh, properties and uh, we're able to uh, look at the lesion size. I can see that, uh, as you can see, Clearly, um, the uh, CT can be used for measurements of the uh, size of the lesion as well as actually uh, unique properties of the lesion. And uh, you can, for example, quantify uh, whether there's a, a reduced lesion, for example, uh, or actually increased lesion or low change, or uh, you can see whether there is an increased uh, fibrosis or actually decreased fibrosis upon uh, on, on, on the drug treatment. So, um, so I, I, I went very quickly on how we used uh, this AI system uh, for, um, for applications of uh, several, um, uh, several uh, strategies uh, for, uh, for the applications. Um, so the, 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 um, you know, some of the uh, other uh, issues is, uh, is how uh, fast and slow you can actually uh, uh, use a system to, to diagnose the diseases. So at, at the front line of, uh, of the hospitals, uh, for example, our system was impl implemented into several hospitals in Wuhan. 
uh, which is uh, which was the epicenter uh, in the issue outbreaks in China, and uh, it was important for the radiologists to to actually be able to upload the images to to the system and uh, obtain a diagnosis very quickly. So uh, we thought actually uh, we can actually resize uh, some of the um, images, uh, uh, DICON images, uh, and quickly, and then uh, and then and then resize back to to make a diagnosis. So some of those are some of the uh, 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 methods we use and uh, you can actually look at the uh, in the details uh, for, 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 for the uh, strategy if you like. Uh, so, um, so in summary, uh, so we developed the AI system for the diagnosis of COVID-19 pneumonia based on chest CT. The system uh, performed comparable to that of a pra practicing senior radiologist uh, with clinical, uh, significant clinical experience and it can actually assist and improve the performance of a junior radiologist. And uh, uh, so I, I think this is actually a particular good example, an important point for an AI system, especially in, in an emerging disease. Uh, for example, if we have another uh, Ebola virus or, uh, and, or another uh, 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 pneumonia, uh, virus for pneumonia, it is important for us to quickly build a system that can be applicable and then can help the radiologists, uh, even the senior radiologists who hasn't seen this type of lesions to quickly bring up to speed. And, and uh, we also uh, uh, did work on correlations of lesion features in a CT scan, as well as markers for, for uh, multiple organ failures and highlighting the multiple organ failure as a important feature of, uh, of uh, mobility and mortality. So for example, that uh, we identified uh, uh, CRP as an important marker uh, for, for organ failures. And then this is actually just to highlight the uh, systemic inflammation as an important uh, marker. In addition, we found actually a number of markers in, in liver and for example, uh, uh, some of the um, trans transamulars and uh, albumin and uh, ALFTs, LFTs are important for uh, for progression to the severe illness and and also the uh, D dimers and the systemic uh, coagulating coagulating uh, functions are also important. So this is actually in the early uh, stage of the uh, diagnosis. Now we know that the coagulable state or especially DIC is an important factor contributing to uh, uh, important uh, mo uh, severe mobility and mortality in the COVID-19 patients in ICU. Obviously, so we also develop a prognostic model that can be uh, used uh, to, to stratify the, uh, the patients, high risk versus the low risk patients. And this is important for, uh, for uh, physicians to identify those patients earlier and then uh, intervene. Uh, so finally, we, uh, we uh, made this system open to all the radiologists and the clinicians. And, uh, and then and so you can download the slides and uh, slices and also the, the codes. So uh, this is actually now available at the China National Center for Bioinformation. And uh, uh, as, you, as, as it is now, uh, it's been viewed uh, almost 10,000 times and downloaded for uh, now actually uh, 3 million times. And uh, so, so, so this is actually, um, we're, we're, we're happy that uh, a lot of people worldwide have been using uh, MEM and, uh, for, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for their actually diagnosis. Uh, we also are uh, collaborating with uh, several other uh, leading institutions and uh, in different countries to, to actually advance this and uh, try to actually make uh, combined data and the algorithms to make them more generally accessible and also uh, applicable to to the COVID-19 disease. So uh, with that overview, I want, just want to acknowledge um, uh, my collaborators. And uh, so this is actually a collaboration with uh, uh, many institutions and, um, and, uh, and then I'll uh, stop here, answer questions. Thank you very much.